What's going on, boxer fans? Julian Williams here at the distance. I got a video for you guys this afternoon. Um, this one is about an article I just recently read that's, that, that I think should be talked about on video. Um, this one is Seku Pao, um, article Seku Pao waits for Bunridge. Um, if a lot of people have kept up with boxing since 2007 and kept up with the junior middleweight division, Seku Pao is a fighter that has waited in line for a number of years for IBF junior middleweight championship shot. He was in line for the championship for at least two years when there was like a championship change between Corey Spinks and Verno Phillips. He was supposed to fight. And for a while he was supposed to fight Corey Spinks. Spinks fought Phillips, lost the belt to Phillips, and then like not, so, not long after Spinks lost the belt to Phillips, uh, Powell lost to DeAndre Lattimore and pretty much lost his mandatory spot. So with Spinks losing the belt to to Phillips, Phillips went on, he fought Paul Williams. He fought Paul Williams November 29th of 2008. I fought him for like an interim WBO junior middleweight championship that he lost. April 24th of 2009, Spinks and Lattimore fought each other for the IBF junior middleweight crown. Sekou Pao, you know, never got his championship opportunity, while other fighters were getting championship opportunities. Me personally, I do think that Sekou Pao rightfully deserves the championship shot. I understand that Bunridge defeated Spinks like last August, August the seventh, defeated Corey Spinks, and what would be interesting though is to see a matchup between these two ma these two fighters. And also, if if you kept up with boxing for the last five years, we all know that Sekou Pao has a first-round knockout over Cornelius Bunridge. And it was a matchup that was quite interesting because both fighters had went down um, at the same time in the first round of the fight, and Pao got up and knocked out Bunridge. And one, one, a fellow channel here on YouTube, D-Style Boxing, says it best that first-round knockouts are very dis deceiving and misleading as well due to the fact that you know you don't know if if you're going to be able to um, do it again first round knockouts are actually hard to achieve in rematches to be quite honest you know some rema rematches you know some fighters want to take the other fighter out you know um you know as early as possible to avenge a loss but with Cornelius Bonridge as a champion he does want to avenge this loss. This is a loss that he does want to avenge. He has to want to avenge this loss because Powell is the first fighter to knock him out and defeat him. So I think that Powell deserves a shot at a middleweight, at a junior middleweight crown against Bunridge, a fighter that he's defeated. Powell's only losses came to Kasim Uma, who is who's a very, very good fighter and DeAndre Lattimore in which I felt that he wasn't too focused in this matchup against Lattimore and Bunridge, you know, Bunridge went on and, you know, he fought, fought Spinks and, you know, that's a matchup that people have been waiting for for a while from like March all the way to August a lot of people have been, you know, waiting for this matchup and they put it on the undercard of Alexander Kotelnik but it was a matchup where Bunridge knocks out Spinks in five rounds Possibly, just possibly ending Spink's career. I believe that Spink's career is just about over. But you know, Bunridge, I think, is a fighting champion. I think he's a fighting champion. I think he wants to prove it. Um, even if he loses against Powell again, I think that it will say a lot for me with him being the champion and willing to face Powell again in a rematch. It says a lot for me about the heart um, that Bunridge possesses and. You know, it's just a matchup that I, that my, I myself as a fan, I want to see this matchup again. I think that it's a good matchup to, I think it's a good matchup for the junior middleweight division. You know, you have two veteran fighters that, you know, that are pretty much starting to, I think that Barnes has hit that peak, that peak in his career, and Powell's about to hit that peak in his career. So I think that it's a, a good fight to make because five years ago they were younger fighters, but now they're smarter, they're older. And I think it makes way for, for a much better fight. And we get to see what Bunridge can do against Powell, possibly, 
if the fight goes on much later than it did back in 2005. So I think it's a good matchup to make, and I think that Powell finally deserves his shot. Um, whether it be this year, this year or next year, I think it's this is a matchup that has to be made um, for for boxing fans in general. And you know, Powell's been on the back bur back burner for about you know for, for for the last three years. He's been on the back burner. He's waited for a championship shot. I think he deserves it after avenging his loss to DeAndre Lattimore, getting the majority decision back in. Back in March, he deserves a deserves a shot at the crown, and you know let's see what happens. You know, Ishe Smith, he's getting shots against younger fighters um, consistently. You know, at, at 160, and you know, Powell, Powell and Barnes have both defeated him. So I think that this makes way for a pretty good fight if it happens. So let's keep our fingers crossed, and hopefully this matchup happens soon. So anyway, if you guys want to see the articles on Boxing Scene front page, so um, check it out. Um, be sure to read it. But anyway, guys, that was the distance. Thanks for watching. Peace.